Hollywood. It's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Johnny, this is Fritz Melchior at Star Mutual. Fritz, I can't think of anybody I'd rather hear from. What? Every insurance case you've called me on has put a lot of dough in my pocket. Well, now, And uh, it just uh, happens that right now I can use a few extra bucks. Uh, quite a few. So what's the deal? Well, as a matter of fact, I hadn't thought in terms of any fee on this one. Oh. Uh, but of course, we'll pay whatever expenses you may incur. Oh? Uh, you uh, trust me with my expense account, Fritz? Are you kidding? Of course not. <laughs> okay, then. Now that we understand each other, what's the problem? Or rather, who's the problem? John Wakefield Edwards. Ever hear of him? No, I can't say that I have. Retired businessman. Leather goods, I think it was. He lives just outside of Albany, in New York. So what's happened to him? Well, nothing that I know of. But he has a lot of insurance with it, including a straight life policy worth 155000 How old is he, Fritz? In his late 60s. Married? His wife died oh, uh, three or four years ago. Then who's the beneficiary? His adopted daughter, Marilyn. And how old is she? In her late 20s. Uh, she's uh, a very attractive girl, I understand. Then who cares about a plea? Fritz, I'll take the assignment. <laughs> Easy, Johnny. You probably won't even see her. Oh, why not? But she lives and works over in Troy. Ah. Uh, well, what's happened to the old man? Well, he called me a few minutes ago and asked, or rather demanded, that I send you over to see him immediately. Yeah, why? He wouldn't say. What he did say, though, just before he hung up, is that under no circumstances are you to let her know that you're coming. Meaning Marilyn? I would assume so. Hmm. I wonder... So do I, Johnny. So if I were you, I'd hop on over there. Tonight? Well, first thing in the morning? Okay, Fritz, we'll do. Bob Bailey, in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Star Mutual Insurance Company Home Office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the hair-raising matter. When a beautiful girl and a fortune are involved, well, instead of waiting until morning, I got out my car and drove over to Albany. Item 11720 for mileage. I arrived shortly after midnight, checked in at the Sheraton Ten Eyck, and although I was pretty tired, I ran up item two, a dime for a phone call. Yes, this is John Wakefield Edwards. Johnny Dollar, Mr. Edwards. Well, why do you waste your time and money calling me? I told Fritz Melcher to send you up here. I'm right here in Albany, sir. Oh, good. Do you uh, want me to come out and see you right away? It's pretty late. No, first thing in the morning will be all right. I'm sure nothing will happen before then. Nothing will happen. I'll expect you to have breakfast with me. I, I beg you, what was that? I said be here at breakfast. 7.30 sharp. Oh, okay. But now, uh, just what did you mean about nothing will happen? I'll tell you about it in the morning. Goodbye, Mr. Dollar. Well, now, wait a minute. Look. You're the boss. Why, oh, why didn't I call him back? Demand to know what it was that he was expecting to happen. For it obviously tied in with his wish to see me. But I guess I was tired after the long drive, and he seemed to think the morning was time enough. So I hit the sack. Early in the morning, some coffee sent up to my room, and then the hotel bill came to $9 each, and that's item three. And by 25 minutes after 7, I swung onto the long, winding drive that led up to the front of the Edwards Mansion. It was in a wealthy residential section, a couple of miles north of the city proper, and sat in the middle of what must have been a full acre of beautiful trees and gardens. As I approached the house, I noticed a car parked out front, a sweet new little sports car. The door was open, and the good-looking kid got out of it, and was just about to climb in. As I pulled her up to a stop, she stood there looking at me questioningly. This is the Edwards home, isn't it? That's right. You want to see somebody? Why, yes. As a matter of fact, Mr. Edwards sent for me. Oh, really? Are you an old friend of his? 
Old? I didn't know it should. Oh, that isn't what I... I mean... Oh, my name is Johnny Dollar. John... The insurance detective or investigator or whatever you call it. Yeah, something like that. Well, hi. I'm Marilyn Edwards. Well, hi. I should have guessed he'd send for someone like you, Johnny. Come on in. Why, uh... Why do you say that, Marilyn? Well, Daddy seemed to be worried about something lately. You know what? No. At least I'm not sure. That's why I thought I'd stop by this morning before going to work. Oh, I thought you were just leaving. No, I just got here. Just before you arrived. Oh. What do you do for a living? Don't laugh. I'm a model. Oh. And stop raising your eyebrows. After all, somebody has to pose for those ads for this pan. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> and shall we go in and see Daddy? That is if he's up. Oh, well, he'd better be. I have a breakfast date with him at 7.30. And it's now exactly 7.31. Mm, then we better go in. Durkin, Daddy's housekeeper. Now, what is breakfast prompt at 7.30, and I ring the bell, and he don't come down for it. Durkin, stop it. Stop it. There, now. That's the third time. Third time? Daddy, not punctual? I think I'd better go up and see. I'll go with you. I heard his alarm clock go off three quarters of an hour ago, so there's just no... Johnny? I thought I caught a whiff of cordite. Cordite? But That's... no, I, I guess not. Daddy! Johnny? Johnny! Oh, no! I'm afraid so, Marilyn. He's dead. Morning. 
had he left them open while he dressed? Yeah. Hmm. Marilyn, heir to his big insurance policy. Had she really just arrived when I got there? If the housekeeper, Durkin, had been in the kitchen making breakfast, it would have been easy for someone to sneak in and... But who? And why? And what about Durkin? Now, wait a minute. The police medic said death due to natural causes. No person, no wounds of any kind. So that's that. The undertaker must have been hungry for business because he got there before noon and took the body away. Meantime, of course, I'd questioned both Durkin and Marilyn pretty thoroughly. Enemy? Oh, no, Johnny. Daddy didn't have... Johnny, you keep talking as though you think he might have been murdered. Does anyone beside you benefit from his death, Marilyn? That's a horrid thing to say. I do. Durkin, what are you doing snooping around this way? Well, it's as much my affair as yours now that Mr. Edwards is gone. What do you mean by that, Durkin? I mean the money he left me in his will. And the codicil in his will, it says Marilyn's got to share the insurance with me if she collects. Durkin. What do you mean by that? Oh, everybody knows her and her father, her foster father. Ain't been getting along too good ever since she decided to get out and earn her own living. Or tried to. I've been getting along all right. Sure, sure. And all the attention you've been giving your dear daddy these last couple of years. Why, today's the first time you've been in this house and... That doesn't mean that daddy and I haven't... They can wish to be left alone. I'm sorry, Johnny. Marilyn... I want to go up and look at your father's room again. All right, if you like. And I'll go along with no, you. No, thanks. I'd rather do it alone. Oh? Now, what did I find? Nothing. Sure, there were a couple of old bottles of hair tonic hidden away under some shirt. But after all, I mean, at his age. And that funny little thing on his dressing table, there was a little... Well, hat stand, I guess you'd call it. The kind you find in a woman's hat shop. You know, a little wooden stand about eight or ten inches high. Johnny, look. Huh? Where did you get that? After what you said downstairs, I guess I began Pretty to wonder. Pretty special. So I looked around outside, you know, for footprints or... Well, I don't know what I was looking for. And you found this handgun? It was in the middle of a myrtle bush. It was Daddy's gun. Oh? And see? One shot had been fired. Yeah. I also see you've carefully put your fingerprints all over it. Oh. Fine. Now, my prints are all over it. So if it was used to... What am I talking about? If there'd been a shot, Durkin would have heard it. What's more, there would have been a bullet wound, and there was no sign of anything in the... Wait a minute. Marilyn, maybe there was... And now, Act Three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Hair Raising Matter. My hunch was right. I was sure of it now. I told Miss Turkin and Marilyn to stay there at the house and wait for me, then jumped into my car and drove into Albany to the Undertaker's. Here we are, Mr. Dollar. The embalming room is right here. Though I must confess we haven't had opportunity to prepare Mr. Edward's body yet. Good. We've uh, we've been rather rushed all day. Yeah, I'm sure. Now, where is he? Right old. Here we are. Was he a relative of your... No. No, just... Wait a minute. What are you doing? Just, uh... Trying to make sure that a crazy hunch I had is... Look here now. Are you trying to pull his hair out? No. Off. What? I think... Now, look here, young man. Now, I... look. Look. Do you see what... What I'm trying to do here? What? Yeah. Good heavens, I can't believe it. We would never have noticed it. I don't think anybody would have. But it's a hairpiece, all right. Just big enough to cover a small ball spot. It 
matches the rest of his hair so perfectly. Hey, you got some kind of a solvent? I don't want to have to rip it off. Why, yes, I think we have to be here sometime. Sure, those old bottles of hair tonic. Probably hadn't used them in years. But that little wooden stand, sure, he parked his wig on it. What did he say? And probably nobody knew that he wore it except himself. And somebody very close to him. Here, Mr. Dollar. Here, this will remove the toupee without damaging it. Yeah. But I don't understand why you want to take it up. Yeah. Right in the middle of his ball spot. Covered up by the hairpiece. And the bullet that made it was a thirty eight special. Marilyn, you say you didn't get here this morning until I did. Yes, Johnny. You're sure? Yes, Johnny. Run up to his room again. Where's Durkin? Kitchen, I guess. Johnny, you have a funny look. I mean... Yeah, it's... come on. I'll tell you this much. Your father was murdered, all right. You... You sure of that? Yes, you bet I am. Now, look here, here, on his dressing table. You know what this is? Of course. It's a little hat stand I used when I was a kid. What's it doing here? I don't know. It's funny. I never really noticed it before. How long did... Daddy, wear a toupee, Marilyn. A what? Toupee, a hairpiece. Oh, never. He was always very proud of his hair. You're sure about that? Of course I am. For a long time, he always used to smell of hair tonic when he came downstairs well, in the morning. Well, it just happens I... that you're wrong. What? A small, very well-made hairpiece covered the ball spot where he was shot this morning. With this thirty-eight, you say you found outside. But I did. Honestly. I believe you. In spite of the way you covered up any fingerprints that may have been on it. You did too, Johnny. Yeah, that's right. Now listen. That leaves only one person who could have known about the hairpiece have killed him and then covered up the bullet wound with it. I knew I'd smell burnt gunpowder when we first came up here. Johnny, if you think that you mean... Yeah. Yeah, but to prove it. Well, I've got to try a bluff. Yeah, see if I can bluff her. I can't believe it. Yet with him dead, she'd have money, more money Hold than... Hold Well, Durgan? So you're back. Where you been, anyway? Checking up on something. Something I should have suspected last night when I talked to Mr. Edwards on the phone. What do you mean, Johnny? Line clicks. That meant somebody was listening in on the phone downstairs. Don't look at me. I didn't even know you called him last night. I was in bed asleep. Were you, Durkin? What I was just checking on at police headquarters... Police headquarters? Yeah, was a set of fingerprints I found on a glass you'd been using in the kitchen. What? I wanted to compare them with some prints I found on this gun. Well, that's Mr. Edwards' gun. The one you used to kill him? That's a lie. Is it the fingerprints? Matter? No, that's a lie. I wiped them off Before the gun. Before you threw it out the window? Yes. Then open the other windows to let the smell of powder out? Yes, I wiped them off. At least I... I... I thought I did. Okay. Let's go. Don't worry. There'll be no part of the insurance or any other money for circuit. The courts will take care of that. And probably with Benny. And for Marilyn, well, you know something? There's a gal I think I'd like to see again. And I don't mean because of her fortune. Expense account total, including all the mileage on my car, forty-seven fifty. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Our star will return in just a moment. our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a little jade statue is the key to one of the cleverest plots I've ever seen. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Bob 
Bailey originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Virginia Craig, Shirley Mitchell, Jack Edwards, Ralph Moody, Junior Matthews, and Parley Bear. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Ann Cumberly speaking.